episode of Trap Talk brought to you by Craig Off. The best gun in the industry. If you don't own one, you should. And if you if you don't know where to get one, you could always call Ricky at Game Masters. They'll hook you up with one. I mean, I know that's true. Well, Rick, we're back in town. We just got back from the Spring Grand. Today, we got the pleasure of doing the Chris Vendel episode live. Uh, yep. and, and got it. I mean, what key takeaways were there from the episode that you really liked with Chris? You know, everything. I think it's going to be one of our, our top episodes. Um, just a little bit. The history of Chris, you know, him shooting, um, how he shoots, his his lead that he uses, you know, um, it's kind of a sustained lead, I guess it was. Um, you know, Chris just Yeah, that, that Frank Little concept that he kind of took after, which which that was interesting because I never I never heard him say that or know many people that shoot that style, but you know, it, 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 it's a really great episode. We got to shoot it live at the Spring Grand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everybody's been asking for Chris, 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 Chris. And we're like, we finally got him nailed down. I got him on after Zach told him that I, it'll be just about 15 minutes. And Chris is like, okay. Thanks and to Kelly. Him. The big shout out to Kelly for getting him on there. She strangled him into the room. Yeah, we had a good time. All right. With that being said, let's get to the show. Well, Rick, before we get to the show, we got to take a minute and thank all of our sponsors because we wouldn't be here without them. Uh, this show is brought to you by Craigoff. Yes, Craigoff. I've shot one since about 2006. Uh, best gun out there. Balance, customer service, the people at Craigoff, top notch. Everything you need to know about a good shotgun, that's for sure. Uh, yes. We got to thank Winnick, Winnick Stockworks, Custom Guns Stocks in Lincoln, Missouri. Uh, nice hat, Ricky. Yeah, I, I love my wig. I broke hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hundreds with my winning stock. But in all seriousness, get a hold of Bobby, Luke, or Bill. Get yourself a stock made. It'll change your shooting. I want to say thank you to Remington. Uh, they've supported the show for since day one, and they've supported me uh, for a very long time. Made All-America teams shoot nitros and SDSs for many years. And we also got to thank Game Masters. If you're looking for a gun, Ricky, you can help them out. Yep, get a hold of me at Game Masters 2. Call me, text me, email me, send a smoke signal. I get you any gun out there. We carry about every brand available in the trap, skeet, sporting clays, even carry some hunting guns, some hunting rifles, whatever you need. We can I'm going to have to try that smoke signal. I haven't communicated with you that way yet, but that sounds like fun. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> so for uh, the next sponsor, Shot Tracker, uh, we just seen them at Vegas at the SHOT Show, and they gave us some great insight on the product. Yep, it's, it's like having a coach on the end of your barrel. Um, they got some new updates coming out that'll really change the game with the shot tracker, make it a little easier to set up. So uh, get a hold of them, get yourself a shot, shot tracker, and, and uh, it'll help you. want to thank you to Shotguns West, Ryan Castani, for being our, our PILA sponsor. Uh, where do you get your PILAs from? They're doing a great job. They've got the new frames out. They're sleek, they're modern, and they look fantastic. Also, really excited about this year's uh, new sponsor, Outlaw Engineering. Yeah, Outlaw Engineering. It's owned by Randy Freston II, uh, R2. Uh, I've known him and his family for years. Uh, his dad's past president of the ATA. Uh, he does a lot of engineering in the oil field business. So get a hold of him for all his uh, engineering needs you got, and, and he can hook you up. Big thank you to White Flyer, uh, making a great target and a great product. We've been smoking those all over the country, right, Ricky? Yeah, they uh, they came out with a new Eco Flyer this year, so hopefully we can get to shoot them at, at some shoots. Uh, I know we did a lot of testing on them, and they are an awesome target, so a little alternative to the pitch target. So looking, looking forward to trying that out. Another thing that I'm looking forward to seeing more of is SOS uh, Clays. Yeah, the, the SOS Clays software owned by Greg Pink. Uh, doing an awesome job. He's taking over the, the trap shooting world uh, with his software. It's top notch. You know, get a hold of him uh, for any needs you have in the shotgun world. And last but not least, we got gun and trophy insurance. Rick, you got to tell me about that. Yeah, you can get a hold of Cole or Larry Cushman, uh, family owned business, and they take care of all my needs on, on gun insurance. They also offer, offer trophy insurance for all your wildlife trophies. Uh, to insure them too, but top notch. Get a hold of them and, and they can hook you up. Literally, it's simple. Get online, gunandtrophy.com. You can uh, get a policy going, I think, less than about 10 minutes. 
very reasonably priced. That's awesome. Thank you to all the sponsors. And with that being said, let's get on to the show. With that being said, Trap Talk listeners, if you love everything about Trap Talk, please subscribe to our page. Also, throw some likes on the videos that you enjoy. It really means the world to us. Yeah, comment on each episode. We read them. We respond to them. With that, let's get to the show. Welcome to Season 2 of Trap Talk. Brought to you by Craig Off. Welcome to another episode of Trap Talk. I'm your host, Zach Nanini. I'm here in Tucson, Arizona at the Spring Grand Live with my co-host, Richard Marshall Jr. Yep. And our good friend, Chris Ventel. Um, Chris... You're a guy that doesn't need much introduction. No. Nope. We've been trying to get you on the show for a long time, but <laughs> yep. you're very, very yeah. busy. You're a very, very busy guy, and we've had guys ask us, hey, when's Chris going to get on? Yes, when's we Chris going to get on? And, you know, and we finally we, wrangled him up. We, we, had, to, we had to get him yep. over here almost physically, but he's in the studio. So welcome to the studio today. Well, thank you. Thanks yep. for talking so, me into it. So Chris, I'll tell a little bit about Chris. Chris doesn't talk a lot about himself with his shooting accolades and stuff. But Chris is one of the top shooters in the nation, has been. I mean, he's shot for, I don't want to be mean by saying this, but as long as I've been alive. So 49 <laughs> years, this is his 49th year of shooting, and Chris has won five Grand American Championships. Him and I have shot off multiple times over the years. He's kicked my butt multiple times. I've won a few here and there. But Chris is the only shooter to ever win any of the titles, I think all the titles you won with the silver sights, correct? The first doubles title. The first doubles I, you did. I shot uh, Rottweil. Yeah, Rottweil, which most of you don't know. A lot of the people use those for skeet. Well, yeah, it was a big skeet. <laughs> it gun. was a big skeet it gun. Was. I know my buddy at home, it Billy was. Butenball, shot a Rottweil in, for skeet. So, but everything else, the other four championships you've won, another doubles, you've won the um, all around and the overall. Yep. And that was all with the silver sights. So you're the yep. only person that's ever won anything, those championships, ring, with the silver ring sights. Wise. Ring wise. Yeah, ring-wise, with yep. the silver sights. But also, you're a 20, uh, four, five, six, seven time All-American or more. Um, you four-time as sub bet captain. Yes, four and then, in a row. So, yeah. yeah, you were captain of that, and then you came over and, and shot in the open. Shot open. Yep. Shot open the year, and that I, well, that was, what, two years, three years ago. I was captain, and then you were second then. So Chris yeah. is a dominant force, especially on the East Coast, but not only there, he comes out here, we're in Tucson, he comes to Vernal and shoot. So we shoot a lot, you know, against each other at all the clubs, um, have a great time. As you can see, folks, we're out, it's nighttime here in, in Tucson. We're enjoying the, the uh, good weather here versus probably what your weather is back home. Well, and, it's a lot better out here, <laughs> that's for then, sure. You know, yes. So. You've shot 49 years. You used to live in New York. Yep. And how many New York State Championships did, did you win? Oh, I've got quite a few, yeah. So uh, multiple, we'll just say. Yep. 20, you, 30, 40, I mean a lot. Yeah, mm. and, and you shoot PA yeah. now. So I know yep. last year, because I always shoot PA. Folks were trying to get Zach to come out to PA. But yep. one day. You know, one day. We finally got him to come to Ohio. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> I'll get up there one day. But PA, I know last year you won multiple championships. You know, uh, it, you've been doing this a long time, but not only are you a shooter and a top one at that, you also own CRV Custom Arms, yep. which you build guns, repair guns, Repairs, you're a gunsmith. General repair. General yep. repair on any gun. Yes. Correct? Yes. You can work on Kragoffs, Prazis, Kohlers, Berettas, Rotwells. <laughs> You know, right. pretty if much anyone, anything. If anyone's yeah. got so, one. Yeah, well, there is. I, I just did a lesson with a guy. He pulled out and he had a rut one. And I said, skeet gun. He said, we had the guy uh, I bought it from was a skeet shooter. He said, how do you know that? I said, well, I shoot all the disciplines. So do you, it, it, what got you into being a gunsmith? Was it I, just I worked kinda... on cars when I was younger all the time. Okay. Um, when I got out of high school, I started working on cars in a junkyard. Okay. Started in the tire shop and then got to dismantling cars and then got into the body shop, uh, putting cars together nice. and stuff like that. And just got sick of laying on concrete and yeah. glass, changing oil, fixing stuff, glass and, shards yeah. in your elbows and stuff it like sucks. that. And and we sent a inquiry into Colorado School of Trades oh. on uh, you know what's this all about. 
Yeah. And they sent me a letter back and said, you're starting in April. And it was like a month away. I was like, holy <laughs> mackerel. And um, Off you went. Gave my two-week notice and went to gunsmithing school. That's crazy. Nice. Yeah. So, so the shooting was deep in your background before you ever thought oh, about yeah. being a gunsmith. So Both my parents shot. My father was a member in a, own, well, a, um, not a owner, but uh, he started like out a, a gun club. A manager. Like a, yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. With a bunch of other friends and everything like that. Like and a they group were club. involved with a gun club. A little private club that. Forever. Okay. So I grew up. I was just a little guy running around, and then I was old enough to set targets on the traps and did that. Now, for, was it, did you ever, were you ever involved at the old hand set traps where I'm talking? You hand nope. cocked it and pulled. So no. That's how I've shot my very first clay target on one of those. I'm not quite that old, Richie. Listen, but... you're older than me. Though. That was Chris not Chris. nice what he did there. <laughs> you were, did you shoot the glass and ball or did they right. have feathers? It wasn't right. the glass and ball. <laughs> they were actually clay when I they shot were, it. Yeah, they, <laughs> he's done for a minute. So, so, <laughs> so when you started, family background, were they like at the time ATA shooters or was it just like league, weekend little beer league kind of stuff? League shooters, 50 Bird League, um, all over the place. Gun clubs everywhere in uh, upstate New York area. Um, we shot two, three leagues all the time, and always a league at our local gun club. Um, my father was always a, a very, very good shooter. Okay. My mother got interested in it, and then both my brother and I were shooters, and we had a full squad of... You had a whole family. Whole family, family shoots. That's, that's the dream, right? That, and, yep. that is cool, though, to do that. I've been fortunate. My dad shoots. My wife's a past all American shooter. Yep. And then Tyler, of course, you know all of them. And we've shot the four of us. And then my oldest son, Trey, which you've known Trey, but he doesn't shoot. But we were out shooting practice one day, so we all kind of shot together. And that was pretty cool yep. to do that. Yep. And then Trey's like, well, can I come shoot registered targets? I'm like, you got a job. You're married. You got to stay home. <laughs> it's always fun to have family around and shooting. But it I want to speak a little bit on the leagues. Because I think we've gotten away from a lot of leagues in this country, and I think that That's leagues true. is where a lot of the camaraderie started. So, like when I started, I remember we did a Wednesday night league at Medcalf Field Sports Park in uh, San Jose, California. It's where mm -hmm. I met a lot of my first mentors, like Bob Graves and a few other people. But, but you know, starting there, you got to know these people and like that 50 birds, and it was kind of like a little deal. But you got your feet wet, and you started oh, to win a little stuff. I mean, definitely. how important do you think that was to bringing up top quality shooters in your area? Oh, extremely important. I mean, the the camaraderie between not only your team but other gun clubs, and then you have a little competition from gun club to gun club and everything like yeah. that. And it was always a lot of fun, and it was tough because little bit of pressure on you because everybody's watching everybody Correct. knows you yeah everybody knows who you are and and it's always tougher to shoot them little leagues because everybody's expecting I, something. yes i've always said that i grew up shooting leagues at home and one of the guys is actually here uh roger hudson's his name that's who i used to shoot leagues with growing up as a little kid and it was always like you were expected, you know, you shot good, so you're expected to win. Right. And it was more pressure, I always felt, going to shoot league than going out to the Nebraska State shooting, shooting. And I'm like, man, this is kind of a weird well, yeah, deal. yeah, because if you don't win, they're going to be really yeah. upset, Rick. <laughs> so, so, you know, you better win the damn league shoot right. at Nebraska, you, Rick. That's you grew true. up, I know, in California, you got the North Bay League, South Bay, North all that Bay, stuff. South Bay, which and are great now, associations. Got to give them a so shout out. Where did you start shooting? Was it Rochester area? It was or? just outside of Rochester, Walworth Gun Club. Okay, that was your first. So yep. your first, you were, you were 14 years old, wasn't it? Yeah, I On actually birthday? started shooting at nine years old. Okay, but your first registered target. First so. registered was on uh, a birthday present from one of my friends at the gun club. Said, let's go shoot registered targets. And I said, well, okay, that's cool. Well, I'll try it out. Yep. So, so on that, were you 12 gauge right off the bat? I mean, were you yep. big? So, yep. so went right in it. And... Were you pretty experienced and already a pretty good shot at that time, or were you just like a complete novice, new, like no, what's I happening? No, I was pretty experienced already and shot um, pretty good scores. I was breaking uh, consistent 22s, 3s, 4s, 
So you hit the ground running. You didn't necessarily say, I'm going to start with ATA and we're going to get going. I mean, you had the leagues Leagues. to kind of grow yourself, which I I mean, I really recommend that model. I think people need to spend more time building that league association, you know, 50 targets, something small on a weekly basis, build the camaraderie and then move up. Because I remember when I started, it was leagues on Wednesday night. Then it was South Bay or North Bay once a month. Yeah. And that was like once a month and you did eight Mm -hmm. of them a year and then they had an overall deal and that was like the big time if you won at south bay it was like you want to ring at the grand american <laughs> you know you're just like whoa we, we you know we just did it right yep. and then from there it was like hey you should try ata and that's what parlayed me into this my first state shoot was you know one shoot at the league those. level yeah one at the south bay level and then okay now go try you know your state shoot. Well, you had, didn't you have leagues at sunnyvale or no well, I didn't join there until a few years after I after started, you started shooting. shooting. So, so Metcalf yeah. was my home, home club, club. Okay. until until I had already become an ATA shooter. The reason why we joined Sunnyvale was because uh, they allowed us to have a key yes. and go in and shoot whenever shoot you want. Where Metcalf yeah. was uh, owned by the the county, and so you had to go whenever they were open. Open so, stuff, you know. And Dad working the job that he worked yep. in, in, you know, the painting. Some nights we'd go up to Sunnyvale at ten o'clock at night and practice. Under oh, the I know. I, I was just in Sunnyvale, folks. They were missing Zach. He hasn't been back. He's. I'm, I I'm, come I'm back. trying to help him. I'm coming back. Trying to get in, him to come back and see you, folks. In May, but you know, speaking of that, you you said you know the leagues. You started heavy. You shot a lot. And then you went into ATA. Yep. When did you decide, hey, I'm really excited about ATA and I want to do this like a lot? That first shoot I went to. You're like me. You were hooked. Go out there and shoot four rounds in a row and I was hooked right then because it was in. like the competition factor was there and yep. I was excited and nervous and I liked it. Do you know how long it took you from 14 to get your first 100 straight? It was... Um, Four years or five years? Okay. 78, I think it was. So right around 18-ish? Yep. Okay. So young. I mean, at that time, they didn't have sub-junior or anything. It was just junior class, well, right? 17, I think it was, yeah. So, so, and back then, too, you were shooting three-hole targets. Three-hole targets, yep. Hand set. Yep. People yeah, the pushing old, the button. Oh, yeah, the old human bowlers. So let's yeah. spend a minute on that. From, from that transition, I mean, what did you like about the way it was, and what did you dislike? I liked the competition. And I like the um, individuality of mm-hmm. it. To you have to you're competing against yourself. You're just going out there shoot your best score. Yeah. And then whatever ends up at the end of the day is what ends up. You have no control over the other shooters. Yeah. Yeah. You just go out there to do your best. Well, and that's the one thing about our sport is people don't. And I say this all the time in my clinics to everybody. I'm like, folks, this is one of the only sports you go to where you can't be beat in the event. Okay, if you do your job, right. the only thing that you can have happen is you're tied. Yep. So yeah. you can tie me, I tie you. Too. Now, what happens is when we go into the shoot-off, that's when the winners decide. That's when you get Chris but, Randall beat. You just freaking put the smack down on him. You know, <laughs> I like that. And, and that's, seriously, that's, so because people always go out in the event and they're all nervous. Oh, I want to win this event. You know what? Just go do what you need to you do. You can't win yeah. it. And then, yeah, well, you can if you break a loan score or well, something maybe, like that. Well, maybe, but you don't know but that on the front end. No. Nobody, just, nobody can say, okay, I'm going to go out and win this event and know that they got it just because they broke well, a no. you, right. you got to go out and you got to get there and you got to see how the chips fall and right. go from there. Um, and that's one of the biggest things. Now, so you've done this 49 years. I mean, you love to do it. You've traveled all over the United States. What's one of your favorite clubs you like to shoot at? I like Tucson here. Yeah. I like Sparta. Yeah. And I always loved Sparta Vandalia. Well. Oh, I know. Just Vandalia because is. when I was younger and I went to Vandalia, I shot the best scores, mm-hmm. and it was the biggest, hugest place I've ever ever seen, and it was just an excitement my, to be there. My first hundred in handicap in Vandalia, we shot off together. Yes. Was that your first hundred? In the, at the Grand? It was my second. Second in Vandalia? Yeah, yeah. it was my, my first. He had you by double. <laughs> Listen to that, folks. By double. Idea. And the first thing you said <laughs> to me. By double, baby. <laughs> first thing you said to me is like, you cut into my money. I did. <laughs> well, back then, folks, we had some cash to, when we did. But you remember that. That was the night. I actually, that was in 2005. Yep. Yep. 2005. 2005. And it was the night I inducted Frank Hoppy into the Hall of Fame. And I had to literally drove fast. Don't recommend that. <laughs> don't do this at home <laughs> but I got up there and I had to shoot off I think we shot the doubles first 
because that was when I was at my long run deal there, and I shot off the you doubles. Shot 700 straight. Yeah, I broke the 700. And the and program let's target. Let's not talk program. about that. Did you yeah. win the shoot off? No, no, I did. Oh, damn. I got the. I still I had the. I, had I still have the. Hey, I was hey, yeah. See, I had the picture frame there, but it was a cool because there was actually three of us that shot, but one of them they listed as a targets only at the time. Yeah. And yeah. you know, so it was a because I get up there, there, there's three hundreds. I'm like, when I left, there was only two. You mean there's a third person cut into my money? Targets only. But deal. But yeah, it was a mistake deal. But no, it, Vandalia is great. Now you've come to to Vernal. You know, and, and Sean's Vernal's club great. and Vernal, that Vernal's a just a great time. Nice place. Absolutely. Not easy. No. But a very but it, nice it's place to fun, show. Fun. A little yep. bit of money to win. Yep. You know, and yep. that's what I, we like to. We Zach, he's got to go shoot the U.S. Open because you know I got to hold it down. Yeah, keep but it local. Dagan keeps beating up on him and ditto, mm. and you know <laughs> they're great shooters. I have nothing to say about that. <laughs> I, but I do get a punch in every you once do. in a while. But, you did last but year. Hey, you got a punch they, in on they, Ditto. They, they, he they, told me the other day he was coming for you, though. That's a tough crew. <laughs> that's the, you got to run with tough crews. I think it makes you better. And to speak on that for a second. Hello, Trap Talk listeners. Zach Danini here. And I'd like to thank our show sponsor, Remington. And today, I would like to go into what shells I use when I'm training and when I'm shooting tournaments. First of all, we start with the Gun Club. This is a great shell. I shoot an 1145 ounce and eighth eight. And this is what I shoot for singles and both shots of doubles. The only reason I don't shoot this in tournaments is because I like a little bit of a harder shot, a little bit of a harder break, but it works great. And it's the same speed as this STS shell. So this STS shell, a little bit harder shot, uh, figure eight wad column, smokes the targets a little bit harder. Also, I shoot for singles and doubles, both shots. And then when I go to the back fence and I want to put the smoke on them, I bring out the Nitro 27, ounce and eight, seven and a half. It's a 1235 shell, blast the targets, works really well. I hope these shells work for you, and I want to thank Remington for supporting Trap Talk. How do you think surrounding yourself with other great shooters and competing with other great shooters has elevated your game? Well, it, it picks you up because you know that you, know, you have to perform. It's on, yeah. right? You, yeah. Concentrate. Look at that target. You know, you gotta, you got to be on top of your game. Otherwise, you're going to look like a chump out there. Well, and nobody wants to look like a chump. Right. You know, talking about looking at the target, elevating your game. You know, let's get into the Chris Vendel style. So, are are you <laughs> are you more like me and Ricky, where you're on the house and like letting the target clear, or are you different? Like, what do you do? And let's just get into that process, Chris. I don't hold a, a real high gun. More level. I'm, I'm close to the roof of the house, yeah. um, and super tight on the gun. Tight. Super so tight. when you say he super tight, in. you get in. I'm pulling it in my shoulder and as tight as I can get with my face on the gun. And yeah. that's that's how I shoot. I mean, it's almost everyone tells You're, me it's too you tight. You get in the gun tighter than anybody I've ever seen. Tighter than him? Oh, absolutely. Well, you, you, ought to, you ought to watch him shoot. He gets low and, and, and tons of oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want any movement. I mean, my hands are tight. Everything's tight to the point where everything turns white. And I, I mean, he go. doesn't have those those stuff on his hands, you know. The yeah, calluses from working. You don't get that from <laughs> financial advising, folks. You, that is that is some that is some it's definite not a, shooting. Not from a pencil. <laughs> I didn't get that at my keyboard with my yeah. double laptop screen. You know, hey, hey, John's even laughing on that one. I got finally got him. When you when you get the producer, you know you're yeah. on one. Yeah. But, so 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 you're really tight. Yeah. So why? Let's talk about that. Why, why are you tight? What are your thought on that? My thought on that is because the, the smallest amount of movement of your face or your head on that stock means a great deal out there at 30, 35 yards. Absolutely. Um, like eight, I did it in math one time, like an eighth inch move of up or over on the comb of your gun is probably two and a half feet out there where you, where you shoot the target. You Minimum. So you're kidding me. No. See, I've never done the You've math on done that. that. I'm just, I'm just a dumb Italian. So, listen, I just I, I mount the, the gun pattern. tight because that's what hits the targets hardest. But listen, and like he just said that because I did this years ago in a clinic, and I had a bunch of engineers, and they were like, "Well, that's not going to make a difference." And I said, hey, "Well, I could show you." Well, how are you going to show me? I said, "Well, we're going to need a level, a laser. We're going to." And the one guy's like, "Well, I know a guy," and they and we did this, and this was in Jersey. We stake stuff and showed. And you could see at the distance, and it was 20 at 35, 40 yards. I can't remember the exact distance, but it was like 21 inches. Yes. 
And they go, well, what's that? And I said, well, if you have a pattern that's a 30-inch circle yep. and you're getting your pattern there, it was almost like 90% is over yep. or under the target. And they just that's went. From a couple oh. hundred BBs to absolute to and, eight, and, 10, maybe. <laughs> and that's yeah. everything because, I mean, you think about it. And when you're going to a target sometimes, just that little, I mean, it's nothing. It's you're but still if you're, connected. If you're, if you're light here, I mean, unless you just know how to keep that gun consistent all the way, it's so hard to keep it consistent in my mind. And that's why I feel like if, well, if I lock it out, if I go all the way to this side, there's, there's so many variables that make it that yeah. hard. Now, uh, visibility, wind, yeah, everything. You know, with everything you, with you doing it. that, are you driving through the target? Or are you float? What's your point of impact? I, I'm 100% point okay. of impact. And, 15 inches. Yep. And I shoot um, the sustained lead style like Frank Little. Okay. Taught. Really? Um, yeah, I was a Frank Little. So how student. the hell does that work? So, so you, it's you, a, folks, Zach tried to learn the sustained lead style. He did not in learn Dubai, this in Dubai, and he did not get it. So, Chris, could you please explain it to him? If you're on the house down low, mm -hmm. how are you achieving that? Because I always thought if you're going to sustain lead, you would start up here and kind of hold it that way. No, it's a quick move over to the target, and then you have a split second where you adjust and travel with the target at the same speed to make sure that you have a little bit of lead and you see your bird bead relationship there, make sure the gun is in the right spot before you pull the trigger. So if I'm getting this correct, you go to the target quickly, yep. get on it. Yep. And then at that point, you pull, you kind of start to pull away from it. Slow down to the target speed and create your perfect sight picture. So you're making a quick move to a slow move to a shoot. Yes, it's mm -hmm. a two speed move. Now, who does it that way? You said Frank Little. Frank Little. So that was his design. Yes. Because I've read the little book, and I, I i mean, it was 15 years ago, so I don't even remember what was in it, to be honest <laughs> he, with you. He probably but skimmed the, the picture. The, it was the, the little, yeah, I mean. I know Zach, folks. He didn't do much reading. Anything with crayons <laughs> is my favorite. Draw <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a little face. We're going to have a, have a <laughs> trap talk crayon edition yeah. for you. <laughs> so, so. so did you learn that from him or was that your own invention nope. then figured it out later that it was his? When I first started shooting, it was the pass through method where yep. the gun's moving faster than the target, shoot it on the way by. That way worked fine. Um, I could be a double A shooter and break a lot of 198s, but there was guys out there shooting 200s uh, with KOA and Frank Little in the neighborhood. You couldn't win. No. So now with so, K, is K similar to that method too, or is he different? I mean, do you know? Because I haven't spoke with K ever. K shoots a, a high gun, and I think he's more about um, get the gun on the target, shoot it. Okay. Um, I'm so, not sure I haven't taken his course. but So uh, more like, I mean, because if I was to explain my style or Ricky's style, I would think it's get the gun on the target and shoot it. I mean, whenever well, the time I, I is I try right. to match the speed of the target and drive through mm -hmm. and, and just keep the gun moving. Right. Which helps growing up in Nebraska, we shot in a lot of wind, so a lot of flat, tart, low, but you never know what you were getting. So you know? on the East Coast, you go into that style of what you shoot, are the targets higher? Are the targets flatter? Like what's the target that you're seeing on your side of the country? In general, they're lower than okay. they are out in the West. So even with that target. lower target, you're still shooting 100% point of impact. You're yes. not, so even on a low bird, you're not letting well, that it, worry it's you. It's shooting 100% for him. Like I can pick his gun up, gun up and it might not shoot 100% for me. Well, yeah, Everybody's, but, but he's you know, setting it at 100, at 100, for, him, 100 for, him. for him. But so. the way he shoots it, it, it works for his, his method. Shoot the first one and then loop to the second one and drive through it. Ugh. Just like that. Great shot shot two great shot we're just trying to help every shooter out there no matter if you're an expert or a beginner and this product will take your game to the next level works for any of the discipline as long as it can find a clay in the image it will figure out how it's moving and how that shot pattern is going to yeah. now in that shot i intentionally shot high was, which is most person people do what you did yep so outside the pattern. Okay. Now, what's it say for the correction of that? One foot. Yep, that'd be correct. Now, on this one, I will smoke the target. If people want to purchase this unit, what's the best way to do it? I mean, is it 
Is it through your guys' website? Is there a phone number to call? Or what's what's that situation? Yeah, go to our website, uh, takeintech.com, and an online store. We have inventory. We'll ship usually within 24 hours. Huge thank you to Jim and Bob at Take Aim Tech for supporting Trap Talk. Now, did you take any instruction from any any shooter? Just, just Frank Little. Just Frank Little? That yep. was it? Yep. Okay. And his, his whole idea was keep the bird above the rib of the gun so you can see it at all times. Do not cover it with the, the bead to shoot it. Is that how you do it? That's how I do it. Yep. So you keep it, so you run up to it, it's above above the gun, yep. then you start to pull away while it's still above the gun. Yep. So more of your movement is left to right than it is up to down, correct? It's a slight correction of movement when you get to the target. Because if you're going up, you're it. losing it, right? If you if you have a straightaway on post three right. and we go this way, we're cutting it off. And, and I mean, the tendency is you can't see it, you lift your head, you kind of do that thing, exactly. right? So so to prevent that, you're saying keep that clay in vision at all times. You're not trying to cut through it too fast. Right, right. 100% allows you to move the bead to the bottom of the target and shoot it and Point. still see that target break over top of the gun. Now, you, with the silver sights, you have a faster lock time. A little quicker. That, that, you know, quicker lock so time. Well, that's higher. How is that going to work if you, so in relation, say you're, Say you were shooting a K80. With the trigger on a K80, what's your point impact gonna have to be? Um, when a little, I, little flatter, maybe? When I switched guns, um, that's the only difference I saw. I that, shot the Rotwell about 90%, yeah. and I shot my Kriegoff over and unders for doubles about 90%. And with the sights, I shoot 100. 100. So yeah, Maybe that is quick. Sometimes a little higher. Yeah, because it is. That's what I, you know. I remember when when my wife very quick. Jody shot a, a sights. I went out one time and, and tried it, and I'm like, what the heck? I was shooting over everything. I'm like, oh. so I like turned down a little. Like, okay, let me. Okay, got it down, but it was still higher than what my gun was shooting at the time. Yep. You know, so, that was so, thirty so, years. So ago. for breaking this down, slower lock times potentially flatter guns because you're swinging through the target more faster yep. lock times more direct impact of the yep. target yep. we want to use a higher point of impact just for our listeners here to break it down because yep. i think a lot of people haven't thought about lock time the mechanical the trigger the hammer falling and and with that sights it's a direct pin right so right. you're not even having a hammer situation where a hammer is hitting a pin In you're just shooting hammer. you're just shooting the plunger right into the primer is right. that correct and it only moves about a quarter of an inch yeah you know, it, it just, Very it, fast. it seems fast, right? It's like lightning bolt, right? Yes. So is that conducive for your style of shooting better? Like, do you like that better or, or does it not matter and you can adjust based on point of impact? I think you can adjust it by point of impact and you can get used to whatever gun you're shooting. Because I've, I've shot from 870s to the Rotwell uh, Kriegoffs. Shot them all. Shot you them can all. Learn them. Shot them all. Shot them all well. Yep. And now for for doubles because I mean sights makes a single barrel. You're shooting over under sights. Or? I have an over yep. under yes. So you're now on. Let's get into that. Point of impact wise, you said a hundred on the over on the single barrel. Are you shooting that same point of impact on the over under for same doubles? Same on the over and under. So everything is equalized. Yes. Now length wise, are you a thirty two guy or are you a thirty guy? Thirty inch barrels on the over and under just because. It we like felt that. right. We all like 30s. Yeah. Just, we got it. <laughs> it just felt right to me. It just moves. Yep. Yeah, moves, moves yep. nice. So 34 top single. 35. Yeah, he's shooting a 35. He's got an extra inch. I don't like that. Some yeah. people do. So. <laughs> you know. And then there's that. And then the, it, we yeah. love him. It Sometimes. Is. So so is that a common? Now I I don't know because I haven't talked silver sights ever. So is that common with those guns, or is that a special thing that you wanted? You, no, it's they, just they it's just an option that they have. Yep. Um, they probably sell more thirty fours than anything. Yep. But there's quite a few thirty fives out so there. So why though? Well, I mean, would you talk about why for you, or you it not just felt know? Right to me. It felt good. Yep. Is it more of a, a move thing, or is it more of a sighting plane thing? Some people say the longer sighting plane is more accurate. I guess that's true in um, rifle shooting, open sight rifle shooting. Yeah. But um, it's just what felt good to me. You just said, hey, this is what I want. Yep. And then in doubles, bam, the 30. And you're still a pull guy. Pull, pull? Pull trigger. Pull. Yep. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. and you've shot, I mean, 
how, how many, many rounds this? I mean, it, half a million, seven hundred fifty thousand. I mean, what are we at now? Um, I'm not even sure. Like registers got to be a high number. I mean, do you know what your registered number is, or no idea? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I'm. Yeah, I don't either. I'm. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's but. Do you but, know what yours is, Zach? Registered, I do. It's like two fifteen, two fifteen or something around that. I know zone. I'm a hundred in every category. Hundred plus, like one hundred thirty yep. or hundred thirty. So we're, yep. we're yeah. I mean, it's you know. Yep. But you're more than that because you've been shooting longer than Rick by a lot. Yeah. Right. Thirteen more years. I started. I was thirteen years old. Now let, let I can were, do math, was, folks. There was years in between there where I didn't shoot a lot because yeah. Did you, you know, consistently was, stay with it from then to now though, at some level, or did you give it up for a few years and then come back? When I was in the gunsmithing school there, I didn't shoot very much at all, just because I was in Denver. Yeah, I shot but that wasn't long ago, right? Shooting park. Shot Stafford's old club. How long ago that, was that? That was in '84 and '85, right there. I was, and then when I came back, I didn't have much money or anything like that so i didn't shoot a lot but once i established a job and was able to get so gunsmithing has been a part of your life for a very long time now oh yeah so i because i didn't know that i thought that might have been a newer endeavor based on what you no, said but it's it it's been a very long time yep. doing Forever. the gunsmithing yep. for yeah 85 i mean that's that's about seven years past when i was a thought right <laughs> so, so, so. <laughs> hello trap talk listeners today's episode is brought to you by winning custom yeah. gun stocks that being said, a custom gun stock is going to elevate your game to get the same fit every single time. And I can attest to that. I broke hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hundreds with my winning custom gun stock. I haven't broke hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, <laughs> Rick, but I ha did break a, a hundred from the 27 within seven days of getting my stock and broke two more that year and loved it. Here, this is it. Okay, okay. You take it or me? We'd like to thank winning custom gun stocks for supporting Trap Talk. That being said, everyone knows... Oh. Winners shoot winning. Are we doing the end work? Let's talk a little bit about your business with the gunsmithing now. Is that your your deal? Yes. So when people want to use your services, you know, what's the best way to contact you? Is it is it your your email or do you have a website or is email there a phone number? Or, or uh, cell phone. Okay. So the best way. So get yep. your and we can put that up on the on the show for people to reach you, that's for sure. But so, so going back to that, C R V, what does C R V stand for? It's just my initials for the oh, gun shop. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we talked about this, folks. And he yeah. hasn't given us his middle name. He hasn't given us his middle we, name. We know, we know and Chris that's Mendel. what the R is in there. We're trying to figure this out. And I tried, but Zach messed it up. Are we back. comfortable sharing it on the show today, or is it one where we got to come back and try to squeeze it out of you later? <laughs> I can share it. It's a family name, and it's uh, my grandmother's maiden name is Redeker, and it's Red from, Redeker. right from the Netherlands. Yeah, well, because he, he said he was going to come on the show if we could figure out his, his middle name. He knew and he Zach, was going to win that And back. Zach yeah. was on his phone on Google trying to translate. He I, said it's eight letters Dutch. and it's Dutch. And I started looking and I said, hey, is it Nathaniel or well, I don't know. <laughs> no, he said Raphael. Raphael, Italian. whatever. It's okay. I can't. <laughs> I love pasta. <laughs> can't hold that against me. Right. So, so. What type of stuff are you doing most commonly? Is it, you know, it's trigger a, jobs or is it, you know, soldering or like, is it everything? Or like, what are the things that, that people should call you for? 95% competition shotguns, um, triggers, adjustable combs, recoil devices, pads, um, fitting. I'm doing uh, stock making. Okay. Um, so, so in the stock making, you're you're taking someone's dimensions, or are you sitting down and going with them and saying, "Hey, this is what we think we need," and then yep. actually, now, are you personally doing that, or are you having someone else cut the stock out? No, I'm doing it at my shop. Yep. So you get it all done. Yes. Is there a lot of people working with you, or is it pretty much when people work with you, they're working with you? I have one apprentice that works with me and does a lot of the stock refinishing and is learning to take guns apart and put them together and learning everything, and he's doing it very well. So in your, in your opinion, how important is fit? Like, is that is that is that like, hey, I can take a gun and I can make it fit and I can go my head on it, or is it more like it, it should fit you? Fit is a lot of the trap shooting game just to make it easier on you to pick the gun up and concentrate on shooting the target. One less thing you gotta worry about. One less thing One to worry about. Thing. Like I've always said, if the gun fits you and it shoots where you're looking, pressure gonna be a problem. It's like Forrest Gump said, one less thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> but so, so when when it comes to trigger stuff, is it more repairs or is it lock time stuff where you're saying, hey, I can actually make these better and refine these products? It's um, mostly making the trigger a little bit better, smooth, um, the correct trigger pull, um, making them work a little bit better. It's uh, and you got your tiny beads and the small beads. Yeah, and Chris does the the, the Vindel bead. Yep. Now, that, now, is that what you named it? So I mean, I mean, it, it works. Front bead. Yeah, yeah, so, small front so, bead, but so, everybody's asked for that before. And it's honestly, said, oh, you want the You bead. sent me one, and I got to say thank you because I just asked you and you sent it to me, and I never got a bill or anything. So if I owe you money, I need to give you something. Exactly. But, he but he I, always so, owes everybody money. I owe money. money. <laughs> but, but what I want to say is, is like, I just randomly said, hey, I'm just going to throw it on one day. And I threw it on one day, and then I went out and shot, and like, I didn't shoot it very well. And like, it changed a lot of the point of impact of the gun. Like, how much, how much, I don't think it's a bad thing, but how much does it change when you go from one of those big old golf balls that you have at Craig off, and then you put that little teeny little thing on there? I mean, is it, is it changing that move and that look it, there? It'll change I, your point of impact. I guess a lot of that is um, more perception because I made the top of the small bead the same height as the top of a regular size bead. So if you forget about seeing a little bit more gap in your, in your beads, um, it doesn't correct. change your point of impact at all. If okay. you use that bead to go to the target and shoot the target, it doesn't change your point of impact at no. all. Now, what it's are your, perception. What are your thoughts on yeah. why smaller? Like, like, what does that mean to you? It helped me out in uh, bad lighting conditions and shooting at night where the front bead of the gun was bigger than the target I was trying to shoot at. And you get a dark day or something like that and yep. targets are hard to see. It was. It well, that makes a lot of sense. We could have used a couple of them today. <laughs> I, needed, I needed the extra small bead. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that's a lot because a lot of people don't get a chance to shoot at night. You go to the grand, you win, you, you shoot a good score, you're under the lights, right? Yep. And I've experienced exactly what you're saying, where you mount that gun up and there's this big old golf ball and then and and the light glowing. is on and it's glowing and you that target looks like a little freaking yep. raisinette just kind of going off into the ground and you're making a shot and you're like, what the hell, you know? So did when did you decide that was a good idea? When did you you know say, hey, we're gonna do that? Oh, I started that when, um back in Vandalia when I went out there for the shoot-offs and my front bead was so big. So you, would, you just experienced it and said, let's fix it. Yep. So did you do it right then, just what cut I, it? What I used to do back then before I did the small bead is I took a little grease from in the gun, yep. some dirt, and I smudged the front bead so it would calm it down so it wasn't so bright and right. so big. See, and then I would shoot the, See, I, I see that bead on the Craig, but I look through it Mm -hmm. So it, I understand what you're saying about how, like Zach calls it a golf ball, you know, and it's fine. I just look through it and I see it in my peripheral, but I understand, because I've had students that are like, well, God, on any, even a, a say it's a Parazzi or a Cole or a Breda, they're like, oh, I'm seeing it. I'm like, well, that's because you're staring at it. Right. You got to look through it. Because mm -hmm. I even got some beats from me one time for a customer. They were like, I can't, these, I, so I changed it out for them. They're like, Oh yeah, and then there are the, and then it was a weird deal. It was real sunny, and they're like, "I can't see my bead now." And I'm like, "Well, you can't interchange all the time. You, right. you, they're going to fall out." Right. How important do you think it is to actually see the beads versus just have them as a reference point? I like to know where the gun is when I pull the trigger. That's right. Okay. And, so you want to know? That's the only way I can um, correct myself um, and learn whether I was over the target or I shot behind the target, is to know where that bead is when I pull the trigger. So around. you're not saying eliminate the beads and just look at the target. You're saying a smaller aiming ish, a smaller aiming object to give more precision, right? Because at yep. that point, if it's smaller, as a reference on that target, you're seeing more of a pinpointed spot on yes. the clay versus if we're using a big bead, we're just kind of blotting it out with the white. Is right. that correct? Yep, yep. that's correct. If, if you were looking through a scope, and you had big fat crosshairs or you had small lines in there for crosshairs. Yeah. What would you prefer? That makes a lot of sense. And I, I, I you know, it's crazy because we do all these interviews. I mean, I don't know if we're 70 interviews in, but you know, maybe 70, 80 interviews well, in. Cool. Yeah. And it's like every time we do one of these, I'm learning something. 
It's like it's just a little a little nuance of about time Zach finally learns something. You know, the good this news Ricky never has to learn. He knows everything. <laughs> I don't know everything. I just know a little bit about a lot. I'm, Not I'm a lot about a little. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm still freaking trying to get there. But but, but it is just, good to see other people's you know takeaways from shooting how they do it versus because not like i always when i teach people it's i'm like here we're going to work with your style we're going to tweak this and they go well we want to shoot like you well it doesn't work so i always say well let's try this try that and with the knowledge that you have and i know you teach lessons and, and chris is a one-stop shop you can do the, i mean you do it all. i can fit a gun too I'm just not cutting on blank on yeah, stocks. I've had guys ask thing. me, and the guys even brought out a circular saw, and I'm like, "Yeah, we're good. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't need to. I don't need to replace the stock." No, Rick, thank you, Ricky, with a sawzall. Just, oh yeah, I got oh. you. Hey, I got calluses actually from working in the construction world. I, you, no bueno. I believe you. <laughs> I, I won't disagree. You were a logger. You yeah. know that. I was, will. Yeah. You were and a, never. That's another. Story. Anybody that says he wasn't, he was. <laughs> In 2023 here, we have done 37 state shoots, seven of the 11 uh, satellite grants. And We're almost there. So, so yeah. most of them. We now have, uh, I think it's 241, 242 clubs across the country using our system. If a club was wanting to use you, do you have like a base entry level pricing or packages that you advertise or is it based on the size of the shoots, Greg? Our base level price is zero. Our complete package system, you know, the whole enchilada, is zero. Zero is a good it's price. A good price. <laughs> yeah, it's a good price. Well, the premium members do not pay a pre-squad fee ever. Yeah. For all year. All year. Can yeah. I buy a lifetime membership? Absolutely. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Give me uh, your first yeah, is there, is there a five I want to be number one. Zach, we, we, want, we want lifetime memberships for me and Ricky. We talked about where you're at as far as hold point. On the house, a little bit above the house, potentially. Yep. 100% high, yep. you're seeing the target, you're kind of doing that, get to it quick and then cross through. In doubles, are you above the house? Yep. Are you kind of trapping that first bird? Are you making a shot to it? Or what What does doubles look like for you in that carom? Almost trapping the target, but I do have a little move with the target. Okay. I watch it come to the bead and move with it on that first shot. So you're I, very close to break point with the hold point. Right. So doubles, you are a lot higher than you would be in singles or handicaps. Yes. Okay. Only and because you know where it is. Yep. Close, right? Yep. I mean, supposedly, unless you're in Florida, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that one, you might not know yeah. where that one's gonna be, folks. <laughs> Just letting you know that. But, but, yep. but I mean, if they walk, right? But you're watching for that. You're watching for that. If it slides, you can make a move. Where I know some people, like Bartholo says, he truly spot shoots the first one. Yeah. But then he also said, if it's moving, I'm watching for the movement yeah. and I'll make a shot on it, yeah. which. I think you have to, right? Because if it's yeah. if the target's walking, I mean, because sometimes they bounce, as you know, yep. especially when they're loading them or doing anything like that, they can kind of bounce a yep. little, and that target can shift a little. And if you're just laying a dot on an area, you're I, in trouble. I, yeah, I, I think so. So, so once you break that first target, Chris, what are you doing to get to the second target? Do your eyes move first? I mean, do you start moving the gun? I mean, what's that look like in your world? Try to move my eyes first. Okay. Um, Get your eyes on the target, the gun will come along yeah. afterwards. And then so, you, and then it's the same thing. You get that quick move to the second target and then sight on it, you have a split second there where you make a little adjustment if you need to and then shoot it. Everything that you're doing, are you agreeing that it's always eyes first and then gun? Like, are Oh, you, definitely. Yeah. So, so singles, to. doubles, handicap, doesn't matter the game. Definitely. The eyes are the first thing that are kicking on. Yes. They're locking to the spot. Yep. And then the gun's coming through. And then you're seeing a little bit of reference there. You're seeing, you know, but but you're not looking at it. You're not right. You're not saying, okay, I want to put this at 6 o'clock. You're just vision. kind of peripherally feeling yourself get to that spot. And Yes. So how did you train that? Because I, we have so clinic. many. Frank Little. Yep. Well, we can't get a Frank Little clinic, unfortunately. No, I no. mean, there's the book, right? We can People can read the book. And but the video. I, the, yeah, I've, I haven't seen the video. So, so. Walking into practice, you obviously have got more accolades than most people have ever got. You're, you know, you're, he's, you're in the Hall of Fame, correct? Mm -hmm. 2017 so, Hall so of 2017 Fame. 2017 Hall of Fame. You've got. Uh, you were in New York Hall of Fame. Yep. And are you in PA now? No. Not yet. So multiple Hall of Fames, multiple grand championships. I mean, it rings along with events. Yep. I mean, multiple hundreds from the Satellite 27. Grand. Yeah, how I many mean, hundreds from the 27? Yeah. Three. 
So he's got three. <laughs> one in Pennsylvania. Hey, oh, do you re- at at Elysburg? Yes. You got to be the only one. You a bad man. For the no. Twenty-seven. Ken Derrick had won the same. Can he? Did he really? Yeah, we tied for Eastern Zone Handicap Champion. Did you win day. that one? That's yes, I won the shootout. So you've got more hunters from the 27 than Zach. Well, that's good. That's not like nice. It. You see, you see, folks. See, he I threw one at enough. me about doubling, but it's okay. It's, 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 it's back and forth. <laughs> I love this little guy. We, we guy. love each other. It's, it's all in good fun. So, <laughs> we do. so nobody's doubting that you've won a lot of stuff. I mean, nobody's doubting that you're deserving of being one of the best trap shooters that's ever walked. Yep. How did you get there? Like, what were you doing? Like, when the, when our listeners listen to the show, they always ask, well, how do I get to that level? Was it competitiveness? Was it you trained a lot? Was it, like, what were the things that you were doing that you seen made the biggest jumps in your game? I think a lot of it is the competition, and I like the competition. Yep. But when I needed to work on something, I worked very, very hard to change. The uh, first time I went to... Frank Little Clinic. I was double A, 25 and a half, and A in doubles. I had to switch from pass through shooter to sustained lead shooter and shot the clinic shooting 12s, 13s, 14s, and a couple weeks after the clinic, still was shooting Bad. terrible. But I had it in my mind that this is the way to do it. This is gonna take you to the next level. This is gonna take, I gotta break this, and I just went on to a practice trap and shot and shot and shot until I got it. Yep. And one windy day, we were in Elysburg and the targets were zinging up into the air like that, and I shot with Frank Little. He broke 99 just like, whoop, boom. Shot him out of the air, and I was like, that's the, that's the way you gotta do it. That's it. Trigger control is everything. So that, that's, yeah. that's a whole lot that you just gave us. I mean, you talked about that hard work. So for you, when you said, okay, I'm going to make a shift and a change, because there's so many people that get in a way of doing it, and they're, yeah. they're, they're down that road. And you, know, you, you look at it and you say, I'm a 96 shooter, and this is where I'm at, and then we're going to make a change, and I'm going to go back to 85. Like, how hard was that mentally to cope with going to that 12 and 13 level oh, yeah. and then and then pushing through it to get to the other side. Oh, it was rough. It was rough. Yeah. I was wondering what did I spend this money for and what did I do to myself? Yeah. What did I cause what, this pain? But with? it was it was like probably 6 weeks I worked on it to get myself to break the old habits, yep. get into well, these new techniques. A lot of, a lot of and practice. It, in um, 3 months I was on the 27 yard line and then I was able to carry a 99 average a couple of years there. and Well, a lot of years. Yeah, a lot of years. Yeah, he says a couple. He's very modest. But it's a lot. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Chris is the kind of guy where I show up and I look on the board for Chris Vendel. Because yep. whether it's singles, doubles, or handicap, you're one of the guys that's got all three guns. And now there's guys out there that got singles. There's guys out there that got doubles. There's guys out there that got handicap. But... There's very few guys in the country, in my opinion, that got all three guns hot. They can go out and they can win an event, singles, doubles, or handicap every day of the week. And you are definitely that. Cheers. But, Thank you. But, but, you know, that work that you said, what kind of practice hours were you doing? Was it, was it quality of practice? Was it amount? Like, and, and, and how much was it? Definitely not amount, but quality. Uh, the yeah. mechanics of the game. <clears throat> You're learning. And that's what I've always said. You get into it. What you, what you put into it is what you get out of it. Okay? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's quality, not always quantity. Now, when I was young, I shot a lot, but I did the same thing. Nowadays, folks, you're fortunate. We got pat traps. You got an issue with a left angle. Lock you, it. You can lock that in and go just shoot 25 and get out of it more than shooting 300 like we used to do in the old days. Right. You know, yeah. so that's the biggest thing is... If you want to progress in this game, you've got to put some work into it. And a lot of shooters, they go out and they shoot a little bit here. They'll shoot a little bit there. You know, I mean, you know, they just want to shoot yeah, handicap with I think us the, the biggest thing that's common is like you go out and you shoot an event or go shoot a state shoot, go shoot an ATA, and then you put the gun away and you don't come back to it till the next one. And you didn't really learn anything or change anything I right. mean, between yeah. here and there. And I mean, it's the people that say, hey, I'm going to make this change. And yeah. like you were already a good shooter. 
but you said, I'm here. You're already in double A. And I need to yeah. get here. Which, and Zach, you don't realize this back in the day, it was it was double A, 27 double A was the best. So you already double he A singles. Already, and, so you were already like at the at the top level. But I wasn't winning. But you weren't winning. You were just that that center guy, just kind of, yep. okay, and you were, what do I got to do? And that's the right mentality is, okay. How do I win? That's right. right. That's what right. you asked yourself. You said, I can't <clears throat> win the game playing the way that I'm playing. So how do I reinvent or refigure out what do I have to do to get to the point where you I had to win? learn what Frank was doing different than what I was doing. Yep. He was winning. He was him winning. And K. 200 after 200. Oh, yeah. K and him were just, they'd kill everyone on the East Coast. And Frank, shoot after shoot. Frank Little used to come out and shoot the Spring Grand back in the day when it was in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. I remember shooting at the at Litchfield Park and, and meeting Frank Little. You know, I mean, it's, you know, there, that's a There's big a lot history of history there. there. There's a lot of information there, you know, that we can definitely get into it on a later date. I, I guess the question that I have, we've talked a lot about your process. We've talked a lot about your work ethic. We've talked a lot about your business. How about in between the years mentally? What are you doing as far as goal setting or mental work before a big shoot? You know, you talk about the grand, you've won rings. When you're going into a high pressure event like that, are there things that you're doing that you've found give you more success and better events than when you don't do those things? I don't know if I do a lot different. I'm a little bit more focused at a bigger shoot than I am at a smaller shoot. But I really don't change anything as far as what I'm doing at the shoot. Um, same same pre-shot routine, same hold point, same everything. But, yep, but when you mechanics, say focus more, is it because the competition level is higher and you're like, I really got to pay yes, attention? Yes. So w what does focusing more even mean? Like, like is it more quiet mind or is it more making sure you're doing those processes correctly? Or what is that to you? Every shot counts. <clears throat> um, look at the big picture. If you miss one and you're out of this event, well, at the end of the week, how is the high overall come? That's right. Um, work. So it's fighting. It, yep. So, so now, yep. and, and if you said, okay, we're at a little shoot, maybe your grit is not at that level, right? Because mm -hmm. it's the weekend shoot and we're shooting for, you know, whatever, right? The pickle right. plate versus <laughs> the ring, right. right? So I guess that's, that's just your, if, I mean, if I could put it in words, I guess, determination and or competitiveness, right? Yeah. I mean, because if you, there's some people that can shoot 100 straight on practice every time, and then they get to the shoot, and it's not so much. And I think, I think, hey, that's not a nice eye roll. I didn't like that. <laughs> so, so, but with Chris, I mean, I see him always step it up on game day. Game like day. Sunday, you're the handicap guy. You get in the championship events, your all-arounds are always stronger. And I guess, is that because you know everyone's bringing on the weekend and you want to bring your best you foot forward? To. Or what, what is that? Definitely. Yep, yep. I just I try a little harder, work a little harder. Um, give 100% all the time. Give 100% on those days because the, the best or the best are going to rise Absolutely. to the top. The, the, the killers. And so it's like <laughs> you're, either, you're either just going to shoot yep. or like or I've, you're I've always have said, a chance at something. You're either That's the it. bug or you're the windshield. Pick one. Yep. I, I don't like to be the bug. <laughs> <laughs> windshield would be nice every once in a while. So, so, Chris, we've discussed so much. I mean, we appreciate you coming on the Absolutely. show. Absolutely, we do. We finally wrangled him uh, down, folks. He's so it took busy. Us a little bit. He's so busy working on guns and triggers and winning. It's just he doesn't have time for this kind of thing. But we appreciate it. Yeah. And we talked a lot about so many things that are going to help so many people across the country. Is there any other pieces of advice, information, things that you'd like to share that you think would be really valuable to the listeners today? Well, I don't know. It, I guess if you're a newer shooter, it would be to uh, find somebody in your area to work with and uh, pick one person to work with, uh, a shooter that's knowledgeable and yep. can teach and can guide you and not give you bad information or just say, well, you're shooting behind them. Yeah. <laughs> well, why? there's a reason behind what is that. that? You, yeah, why? You got to analyze what, what you're doing wrong and figure out what you can do to change that stuff. But um, other than that, it uh, comes down to you most of the time and right. how hard you want to work out there how for the target. How hard do you want it? Yep. That's the yeah, because you've worked at this your whole life. Yep. I mean, you're, you're, I mean, 
I, I hope that I could stay with it the way you guys have your whole life. I mean, I'm 20 years in now and it's like, it's a part of me. And I think yeah. there's people that they do it and they get sucked into it. And like you said at the beginning of the show, you said, I shot that first hundred and it was the greatest thing ever. And I knew that I wanted to do it. Yeah. And I felt that's exactly the same way. Like there's people that don't feel that way and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I felt that exact feeling that you described the first time I did. And I said, I'm going to do this and I want to get good at this. Yeah. And, and once you can wrap your head around, I want to do that. Well, then that drive comes, right? Yeah. And, and nobody wants to get beat. I mean, we're pretty competitive people, right, Rick? I mean, we're nobody, all competitive. Nobody wants to lose, right? right? If we're not, what are you doing out here we, shooting? We, 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 <laughs> I mean, we, I, and now that being said, I also think that the three of us are all are able to say, you know what, if I'm not shooting good today, I want Chris to win or I want Rick Absolutely. to win. Absolutely. You know, because- I want the people that I'm friends with or know I, I, to, I, to win. I'm and excited that's... when I see you bust 100 from the 27 or a big score, because it's like, that's, that's our buddy, right? And I think more people need to look at the sport that way. You know, it's you versus the target. That's right. As you said, Rick. That, I mean, if you just do that, you do your we, job and we move forward, right. we can right. all carry to a higher level. And then, you know, you see what happens. The chips right. fall where right. they may. But yep. absolutely. Um, we, we love this information, Chris. I don't know if we'll ever get you on the show again. But, <laughs> but, but we but we loved you and, and we appreciate you. And I hope you kill it this week. Absolutely. You're a rock buddy. star. Now, anybody else, anybody you want to thank? Sponsors, anything? Any shout People, outs? Shout outs to anybody? Well, Remington for uh, helping me out when I was young. Um, Amerigo. Magnaroli. He was a, he a was. big part of keeping me, keeping my head together at the Grand American and stuff like that because it was just a big wow factor for me. And when I got yeah. in a shoot off and I was mad because I missed. He was the guy that came over and said, hey, look at all these people that were watching. That's right. You know, you made it to the shoot off. You know, and yeah, that, that's a great it's that's a, a great piece of advice right there, folks. I, I Frank Hoppy did the same thing to me. Yeah. You know, he's like all the people back there weren't in the shoot off. And right. I was like, oh, well, yeah, kind of makes you get a little feel, but you're still like, well, right. I wanted to win, though. Everybody well, wanted to do better. But yeah, he's like, you can't always you did win. better than everybody here. Yeah. You know, because you were out there. It's a hundred percent true. You can't always win, and people go out to that shoot off, and I and it disappoints me when people go out there and they're in the highlight of their day, and then they shoot and they get so angry and they get like upset with it because yeah. just making it's an honor, right? right. I mean, it's so it hard. This game is so thin. You were the, the difference, best that day. The yeah. difference between winning and losing is so thin, right. and it's I mean, it's only getting thinner. I think with the Absolutely. technology, the gun fit. I mean, shells, all these things that come into it. I right. mean, there's more and more good shooters that are going out there and popping them. But um, we're definitely... Anybody, anybody else? Uh, my parents for helping me out when I was younger. Um, good buddies at the gun clubs that always pushed, you know, let's go here, let's go there. Um, Silver Sights, um, supplying a good gun. I, I've been pretty much trouble-free with that thing it's been clicking right along for me because so, of you working for on it <laughs> 20 years now you know how to do the work that's for sure and i think you look great in that trap talk hat so you, <laughs> you you keep that thing rolling we love this episode i'm sure the listeners are gonna love it that being said i hope you shoot some big scores this week we well, hope to see in the shoot we off hopefully it's you know us three together that'd be kind of cool that yeah would I'd be nice I'd, I'd like that i mean yeah we, we get to the point i mean Coin flip? <laughs> no, these guys no. are better for that. Oh, we don't no coin way. flip. You don't flip no. nothing. I know he ain't giving I nothing. I might get him to coin flip or something, but it's okay. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Everyone listening in, happy yes. Friday. We'll see you next Friday. This we'll see you next day. Friday. Thanks. And the Trap Talk podcast is brought to you in part by RM Shooting Clinics. Have Ricky take your game to the next level. If you want to shoot hundreds of hundreds of hundreds, give Ricky a call today. Zach Nanini Financial. We believe in putting people first. 